In this video, we're going to focus on having a option here to select team members. As you can see here, all the team members that we have here as a nice bubble or a tooltip option or a drop down option. We can select one or we can maybe just put in a new person in here. For example, Jake. We add up Jake. You see here, it will be added up. And of course, we get this nice bubble of Jake. So let's try to look how to do this. So let's start to continue on and this is part 11. We're going to fix here the names. We want to have like a drop down option that we can select if a name exists on the list. And secondly, we also want to have the ability to type a name that, that we just want to type in or add a new name. So let's start to work on that. So we're going to scroll down here. And what I'm going to do here is I'm going to look into the uh, members if we type. And then in here, what I want to do is the following. I'm going to say here data list ID and give it an ID as well of names. And this here gives us the ability to allow a drop down list. So if I do an option here and I give it a value, and let's say here, for example, right now the value would be James text. If I save this and I will have to put in here, of course, I need to activate here list equals whatever the name ID here is or the ID name here. So if I save this refresh, you should see here now James text. So that looks quite nice. And even we have the ability to just type in James or anything else. So this works, but of course, we need to make sure that this is intelligent enough that it grabs all the names we have here. So how do we do this? Well, let's scroll down all to the bottom and we're going to create a new function. And we can give this function, for example, add names. We want to add our members or names of the people who we assign to the task. So what I'm going to do here, first of all, I want to grab the names ID. So say constant names equals, let's say a document dot get element by ID and in this case is, is the names. So once we have this, what I want to do next is to get what we can call our array of names. We want to have this and how can we do this? Well, basically this here is quite similar to with the chart data and data sets because basically we just want to access the data sets here, um, here up, oh, sorry. And uh, there we are. We want to access the data here and then to the data sets and again in the data. And then I want to get the names. However, these names are all separate here. So we need to make an array of those. And this will be very important later on. So we want to make sure we get this name object here to grab all the names. So let's do this now. So what I'm going to do here, I'm just going to say here, constant, and let's give this a name array, uh, let's say, um, names array equals, then I'm going to say my chart, I want to go into the chart object to data, dot data sets index zero, because we only have one data set here. And then we say dot data, and here I'm going to say here map method. The reason why map and not for each, because I want to create an array and the map method allows us to create an array quickly. There's a new array completely. So uh, what we need to do here, of course, is let's say here, the data point. And we don't need the index, so it's say here a function arrow expression. And well, apparently we do need like this. So let's make sure we have that then. All right. So in here, what I want to do is, of course, because this is the shorthand for the data here, we just have to say here, data point dot name, and that is the one. So if I do a console log, we should see here nicely everything. Save that, refresh, open up developer tab, and of course it doesn't work. Why it doesn't work? Because we didn't activate the function, so being triggered. So let's do that here. I just trigger this function here immediately on load. So as you can see here, all right, get element by ID is not a function. Get element, all right, my bad. I misspelled this, save, refresh. 
Alright, we're getting now all the names, and of course we get sometimes duplicate names. We don't want that of course, so we need to make sure that that is being filtered out later on. So we have this, let's create now an array out of it. I say we turn this. When we do that, we can say here, this item here, we can do a console log, so we have the full array of these names. There we are. An array with nine elements or uh, items in there, from zero all the way to eight, which is correct because we have nine tasks. So now we have that as confirmed. What we want to continue on is create something and let's look through this first. We want to look through it so it will be here, looped in here nicely. So what I'm going to do here is, um, first of all, what I need to do here is, I'm going to grab this names array that we just created dot for each and later on I will filter so don't worry about that but this is going to create first the item itself so say for each and then here of course we can look through this and we can just say just in case let's say your shorthand will be member name and I'm using just different terms now to avoid too much the term name because we have it here in multiple places it can be very confusing this is the mem member name and uh, what you want to do here, function L expression, and then what I want to say here. Um, what are we going to do here is the following. We want to have basically the item, or more specifically the option, that this is what we call an option, being created. So we're going to say a constant option equals document dot create element. And then we say here, option. We're going to create an element in the document, in the HTML document, with the name option, which is an option element. So once we did that, what I want to do next is, of course, I want to give it a name. So if I scroll all the way up, back into the item here, uh, where are you? There, you can see here the value. So this is the value attribute. So that will be very easy for us to play around with. So let's go down again, back to the bottom. Let's click on the side here. There you are. So I'm going to say here the following, option dot value to trigger the value attribute would be, so what is the name that we want to grab? So I'm going to grab the member's name and that is that. Once I did that, we're not done yet because we have created the option, we have created the name from the option, but where do we want to assign it? We want to assign it in here. And remember, that was the names uh, element or with the ID name of the names. So I'm going to grab this names here. Then I say here, this name is the parent. Parent, so then I want to say a dot. And then we say here, append, and append means to attach child. So we're basically going to point the parent, this is the parent of the child, and what is the child? The option. So if I put in this here, so I call them save this, refresh, you will see here now we have all of the options here so if i say james you get them three times of course however this of course is not what we want what we want to do we want to filter out the item so now what i want to do here is the following let's filter out the item so what we're going to do here is let's say uh let's give this our i guess let's say a uh, filter of the name so we can just grab this and i'm going to say a constant I'm going to grab here and then we just say here um, the names array filter and here we're going to use an array so we're going to say this is the array we want to filter it so that the duplicated names will be removed so I'm going to say here filter rest operator new set basically creating a new array based that is filtered but based on the names array that we created so once we do this, put it in there, we save that, copy this, put it in there, save, refresh. Alright, so now if I type in James, there you are, you get twice James, but of course this is one of them. And uh, one is of course our hard-coded text. It's somewhere here up, I'm going to remove that right now. Alright, save, refresh. So this starts to look quite nice, let's test this. So I'm going to say here now, new item. Let's say here Angel, and Angel is going to work on this project here, and I don't know what 
What's going on with my mouse? All right, sorry. And we're going to say here. Oh, sorry, that will be English. Should be in here. That's a new one. Task ten. Add. All right, so we have Angel here. Now I'm going to remove this. And just look here. You can see here what is happening. It doesn't trigger. So it's not being added up, Angel. If I, even if I type in, you cannot find it. The reason why, and let's go down here to the bottom. The reason why is that we trigger this basically on load. This is more an unload functionality. However, what we have to do here afterwards to load it in here as well. We can just remove this remove option. And what I want to do is when we add a new name, I want to make sure that we also start to trigger this function again so that if ever we have angel as a, a character or person in here it should now be added as well on the list so see a task number 10 let's go to select something simple i'm going to say here now angel add up so now we have angel added up here and you can see here it's already starting to show so if i remove that click on that we have this but um as you can see here, we have another issue. What's the issue now is we're adding it up, it's filtering, but once it's added, and then afterwards we're adding again the names, it's triggered again to add again on top of it, even if it's filtered, because this, the filtering is based on the array, which is all correct. However, these are options that need to be basically cleared out. So let's clear them out. So to do that, what we're going to do here is we're going up here. Uh, we have this here, and I guess we could do it here, or we can do it just after the constant of names. What I want to do is, because these are all child elements, I want to clear out all the children. So all the children will, elements will be removed, and we're going to create new children elements. So what I'm going to say here, the while loop, and then in here, in the while loop, what I'm going to do is, I'm going to get here the names, but then this is the names here. Let me just do a console log first. Console log. And what I want is not the names, but I want to say the names dot first element child. If I save this refresh, it will grab the first element child or interesting. It does not even grab it. Uh, first element names dot first element child. Let me check are we missing something all right of course we're not missing yet anything so let me explain what's going on here so i thought we we're missing because it gives a value of null meaning i cannot find anything while we do have anything here so let me explain why what is happening so we have the understanding and the logic of javascript so basically here we're saying get this element and then search if you have any child element remember we didn't insert anything until very uh, until here so that will mean that we cannot find anything, of course. So what I want to do is, if I put it in here, you will eventually see we should have something or after the, the for each loop. We're going to save that. Then you can see here the option, and we can see here every child probably, but uh, you get a lot of information here. Anyway, this is what we need to have, but we only get the first element of the child. So what we're going to do is we're going to loop and we're going to remove the first element and then we loop again and remove the next first element until we remove every element or every child element in here. The loading of that must be done of course here above. So what I want to do here, I'm going to say here for a while loop. So if we have any names, if those names are existent, then what I want to do names dot first, sorry, the first element of child. So if there's any first element of child, in that case, what I'm going to do here is just say, remove that one by saying names dot remove child, which is basically the opposite of what this does. This is to attach a child and this one is to remove a child on the parent, which is the names. So once we did that, then we're going to grab here, what exactly do I want to remove here? It is the names dot first element child very straightforward so basically just say do we have any children if so remove the children so once we do this so my column here save that and i guess we could just clear this out or just like that all right so now what i want to do is let's put in another one here 
past 10. Select the date, select another date, and then we say here what was this? This was, um, uh, well, Luna we already had, so uh, what was that? Uh, Angel, sorry, that's the one. So then we select this, all right, so that's good. Then I'm going to clear out, all right, we see already the suggestion, and you can see here now it shows these five options here. And let me double check, do we have everything here? One, two, three, four, five, I think they should be all in there. Santiago, David, James, Luna, and Angel. There we are. So let me just confirm one more time by clicking a new one. And then I'm going to say here, this will be moon. Let's add this up. And now we should have another item here with team member moon. Then if I select that, you can see here, now we've added another one. Absolutely phenomenal. So that's it. That's basically here what we have. In the next video, we're going to do a special item which is going to the weekend. So sometimes we have this planning here, but of course, what about Saturday or Sunday? Or depending on where you are in the world, maybe the Friday is being considered a weekend. So in that case, you want to highlight specific areas, maybe gray them out, and indicate that that would be the weekend days or the holidays or something like that. So we're going to create that nice color effect for that. We'll do that in the next video.